Chris Phillips is former head of the National Counter-Terrorism Security Office. Good morning to you. Good morning. Morning. Do you agree with Jeremy Corbyn that it is wrong to let the police shoot to kill? Well, the whole argument and debate is a bit ridiculous, actually, because the moment you put firearms in the hands of police officers, you're asking them to go out to deal with a, a situation where lives are in danger. Now, a, a police officer would never say that they shoot to kill, but they have to shoot the person to stop them doing whatever they're doing. Uh, and, and what you do is you shoot at the main torso, which contains the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, etc. So the chances are, if you shoot someone, you're going to kill them. And it's uh, and you know the whole debate is a bit ridiculous because we we've got to have uh, police officers with firearms, uh, and if they've got firearms, they're going to may have to use them at some stage, and they're likely to kill someone. Does it surprise you then to hear the leader of the opposition saying that he feels very uncomfortable with the idea of shoot to kill? He thinks it's dangerous, and uh, he certainly gives the impression that he's not a supporter of the policy. Well, it's it's a bit lewd. It's kind of a shows a bit of a lack of knowledge of uh, what happens when you have a, a gun. Um, anyone that shoots uh, at a person is likely to kill them. And a shoot to kill policy, and there is no such thing as a shoot to kill policy. There's a there, there's the need to shoot people if they are acting in a way that's uh, endangering people's lives. So. You know, it's it's just a lack of... It seems to be a lack of knowledge of what the police have to do. And that sort of sums up the situation we have at the moment where police officers are out there trying to do their best to keep people safe and they have to carry firearms and, and then we have people debating whether they should kill people or not. Just say where you are, if you would, please, Chris, because I want to bring Joseph Cottery Monson in, who's a criminal defence lawyer at Mary Monson Solicitors, a national law firm with offices in London. Hello to you, Joseph. Good morning. Good morning. So, of course, if you are faced with terrorists on the street, the police who have guns should feel that they have permission to use those guns and, if necessary, kill the terrorists. Nothing wrong with that, is well, there? I, well, there's nothing wrong with it, but isn't that... Is, is, is a disagreement with that what Jeremy Corbyn's been proffering? Absolutely not. The point is, he said, and let's be very, very, if we're going to examine his words in detail and deconstruct them, shouldn't we consider what he actually said? I would be unhappy about a shoot to kill policy. He's not talking about self-defense. Self-defense, proportionate response to an immediate threat has been enshrined in law for hundreds of years. There's no way that that's what he means. What he's referring to, of course, is a blanket shoot to kill policy, the type of which we saw in Northern Ireland, which was tremendously counterproductive. Some people said it was the, the best recruiting sergeant that the IRA ever had. And the reality is, when you're talking about something like Operation Krakos, uh, which was made infamous by uh, the, uh, the shooting, uh, the, the unjustified shooting of Jean-Charles de Menezes and what was seen as something of a cover-up afterwards in respect of certain deleted messages from the record between the officers, you know, that's specifically to deal with a terrorist threat. Uh, it relates to headshots rather than body shots. The reason for that is because it's based, you know, that whole culture is of, of policing uh, and of operational policing is based on the idea that somebody may be a suicide bomber. Now, when you have an immediate threat, there's no question that Jeremy Corbyn has not said anything in relation to whether that would be proportionate. What he said was, well, we need to look at this in stages. You know, like the uh, very experienced person we've just had speaking, uh, Mr. Phillips has said, you know, you look at different uh, different circumstances where the, your intent is to disable. There are chest shots, there are leg shots, it's all proportionate. But surely the question that was put to him, it is in response to the terrible attacks in Paris, and it is preempting, unfortunately, an inevitable similar attack here in the UK. The question was put that does he object to a shoot-to-kill policy? We're talking about a similar scenario. We're not talking about yeah, the police just walking kill, around shoot, randomly shoot. killing people. I mean, this is people who are well, presumably demonstrating a genuine threat to members of the but, public in but, this country. But, but with respect, that's not what a shoot-to-kill policy means. A shoot-to-kill policy means a preemptive response from police uh, 
in, in respect of suspicion rather than immediate danger, which is what we had in Northern Ireland. It's what the phrase means. That's why he answered it. He's somebody who's been around during those periods in politics. He's somebody who had opinions about that period then. It was a dark day in this... It was a dark period in this country's history. And when you talk about a shoot-to-kill policy, you're not talking about, as you said earlier, whether the police have a right to shoot to kill. Of course they do. It's enshrined in law. Nobody would suggest that they didn't. Shoot-to-kill policy, very, very different. Chris, do you agree with that? This is, this is about the police just um, having suspicions about somebody and shooting them. This is not yeah. about necessarily taking somebody out who is running through a shopping centre, murdering people as they run. Yeah, I think it is. I think the question was actually really, really poor because it's, uh, it doesn't make clear what they're talking about. Just to go back to Operation Kratos, that was basically when we realised that we were facing people with suicide vests. Uh, and if you had the intelligence that that person was wearing a suicide vest, then effectively it's, it's very similar to them carrying a firearm. You have to deal with them in a way that's going to try to stop them from killing people. So if you had the intelligence that they were, um, you know, they had a suicide vest with explosives on them, then you had to shoot them uh, because they were just about to kill people. Now, you know... It, it's crazy to think that you wouldn't ha you wouldn't be able to do that. Of course, you then have to go down. Well, how good is the intelligence, etc.? Because you do you do need, uh, as we saw in George Charles uh, Demenzies, the, the mistakes can be made, and and when we're at a heightened sense of alert, then that is like more likely to happen than than otherwise. The the thing is, Joseph, at this time, surely the police who are protecting all of us, they need to feel that the members of the public are on their side and the politicians are on their side. And surely the correct answer, if what you're saying is correct, that actually Jeremy Corman didn't really mean it like that, surely what he should have said is, of course, in a situation where you've got people murdering others, terrorists who are running through streets killing people, of course I would say to the police, you go ahead, you kill those people, you take them out. But he didn't say that, and it does seem to feed into a general rhetoric from him that he is anti any kind of violence towards um, terrorists whatsoever. Well, you know, I, I didn't hear that whole interview and I suspect that you didn't either. And, and we don't have the context. The reality is... Well, I, well, I, di I did actually hear the whole interview. OK, well, in, in, that, in that case, I apologise. But, but the, the, rea the reality is here, we have a situation where somebody, something's been taken out of context. Maybe the wrong word was, 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 was chosen, maybe the wrong phraseology, maybe the wrong emphasis. But the reality is he said nothing that neither, neither, I, neither I nor Mr Phillips appeared to disagree with the contents of what he said in respect of a shoot-to-kill policy. But, you're, but, but, you, but with the respect, you are both giving him the benefit of the doubt. You are both presuming... That, what, that he doesn't have any objection whatsoever with shooting people to kill them if they are indeed posing a genuine threat to others. Well, that, that, that's a good point. But let, let me counter it with this. And that's that, is there an argument here that everything that this man says about law and order is put under massive scrutiny? Because, in fact, what this whole argument is really about is not the re really the effects of terrorism and the police's policy, but, but an attempt, really to take a man who the media and establishment are really quite scared of and presenting him as unfit to rule. You know, that's the real unsavoury narrative to all of this. And that's, that's why it's so galling. But it, something but, that he said has been mm, taken completely out of context. But it's very important we analyse what he says because this man... Jeremy Corbyn, he wants to be the next Prime Minister. He wants to be the Prime it's Minister, the, le of course, the yeah. leader of all of us. It's, so it, it's very important, particularly at a time like now, when the public are concerned, when we are all concerned, and we want to know what our politicians are prepared to do, what the politicians are prepared to give the police the power to do in order to protect us. And isn't it interesting, okay. at a time when the public needs reassurance that Mr Corbyn is firstly refusing to answer the question of whether or not he would back any kind of military intervention in dealing with IS. He refused to answer that. He kept saying it was a hypothetical question and he was not prepared to get involved. So we have no clear indication from him as to whether or not he would be prepared to take military action. He then says that he is unhappy with a shoot-to-kill policy when dealing with terrorists. Well, you've asked me about shoot-to-kill and that my answer is this. 
what he said relates to something completely different to what people are understanding. A shoot-to-kill policy is not the same as shooting somebody to kill them because they're an immediate threat. But the police, who are, that... the police who are out there on the streets, the ones who have the guns, the ones who will be in the position, unfortunately, if this ever does occur in this country, of having to deal with it, they surely need to feel that they have the backing of the politicians. They have the backing of the would-be Prime Minister that they can do whatever they have to do to keep people safe. Whatever they have to do. Shoot-to-kill policy in this country, in Northern Ireland, was never about what people had to do. It was about a disregard for life based on suspicion, not on logical, appropriate policing. You know, the modern way of doing things is not shoot-to-kill policy. It's look at the situation on its merit and deal with it appropriately with the goal of, of saving lives. You know, that is what he's talking about when he says no shoot to kill policy. I agree with him. I suspect most people listening to this agree that just on the basis of a bit of a suspicion, we shouldn't be we shouldn't be uh, popping off citizens and turning our streets into a war zone. Can, can, can I just uh, add to that? Because, the, the, well, I don't think we need to understand that police officers just work within the law and the law is made by Parliament. So, you know, the police officers would not, uh, in any circumstances that I can see at the moment, be willing to go out to uh, to shoot people, as you've just suggested. I think that's what, right. What, I think that's yeah, right. Yeah, well, but absolutely. But, the you know, we I think there is a key point that, that the police officers do deserve to be supported by by in in very difficult circumstances by their politicians and and it's I think it's more of a, a feeling uh, that's coming through that uh, the police won't get supported and and to be quite frank at this moment they don't feel supported by their home secretary so it's quite difficult for all, for the police all the way around. No, it's very difficult and they they you know there's all types of grandstanding from Theresa May the police have been an easy target I completely agree with that but. You know, at, at the same time, wherever we have people who are in a position of power, they need to act with responsibility. They need to show an excellent level of diligence. And they need you know, to feel, uh, uh, and like, don't they need to feel at the moment that they will not be uh, criticised and attacked if they, with the best of intentions, are trying to keep people safe? Well, I think, yeah, I think, but at the same time, the responsibility, these are big boys, they're big girls. The responsibility is that a police officer needs to feel supported by society, of course, but at the same time needs to be accountable. And we agree on one thing, you know, police have to behave within the law. If there's a threat, then you can shoot. If the threat requires, requires killing, then you can kill. But, but that's where the line is drawn. And the police need to have a sense of responsibility you know, in that regard, and, and I know I go on about the Jean-Charles de Menezes case, the most unsavoury thing about it wasn't that frontline officers made a mistake, it was that management covered it up, you know, and, and as long as things like that take place, I'm sorry, but, you know, there's going to be a degree of criticism because you're not coming to the table with clean hands in this argument if you cover up your own mistakes. Very interesting speaking to both of you. Thank you very much for your time. Chris Phillips, who is former head of the National Counterterrorism Security Office, and Joseph Cottery-Monson, who's a criminal defence lawyer at Mary Monson Solicitors, a national law firm.